What is going on, Jerome Mob? It's your Don Jerome back at it again with another episode of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week of the season. I know I keep saying this, but I really do feel like this week's episode is the best episode of the season. I don't really know what else to tell you guys. Today's episode, we got two brand new signature sneaker debuts, a bunch of OG nostalgic sneakers that will definitely bring you back, and Montrez is absolutely on fire this episode. So we got a lot to talk about. Let's play that intro and get straight to the kicks. Starting off the list at number 10, we have Montrez Harrell with the Reebok Fury Zone. Reebok isn't the brand that it used to be, at least in the basketball scene, but to me, it's still great to see them on the court. As you can see here, with Trez's player exclusive colorway of the Fury Zone. Using a white, green, volt, and orange color scheme with a floral pattern on the upper, this PE is accompanied by a couple of Trez's logos on the straps and heel that go perfectly with the new era's 90 aesthetic that the Fury Zone is going for. Listen, I don't know how long we're gonna keep seeing Reebok sneakers on the court, so I think it's best that we appreciate them now while it lasts. Next up at number nine, we have LeBron James with the LeBron 8. Now, out of all the guys in the league that have a signature line, LeBron is by far the most erratic as he wears a wide variety of different LeBron sneakers. And here he's wearing a retro LeBron 8 in a new colorway. Using a black, yellow, and purple color scheme, you guys already know that I'm absolutely digging these as a Laker fan, but I think the decision to go with a black base with subtle hints of purple and gold was the right call here as it reminds me of the good old days where player exclusive colorways would look a lot like this and i'm also loving the hints of nubuck and suede on the upper as once again it gives it that old school feel but truthfully as a laker fan i have a lot of other things on my mind like can we just be good enough to get 10th place 10th place that's all i ask no. <laughs> Coming in at number eight, we have Clay Thompson with the Anta KT7. I don't know what it is about this colorway, but when I first saw them, I fell in love with them. The white, yellow, and black color scheme is an absolute winner here, but the unique outlining of all of the lines on the upper in black really make the silhouettes stand out and give it a very unique look. That kind of makes these look like they belong in a cartoon world or something like that. Either way, it's just a super clean aesthetic with a really unique visual. Oh, and uh, can we also shout out the double folded socks to hide the Nike swoosh? That's called brand loyalty. Next up at number seven, we have George Hill with the Zoom Freak 3. Now, I don't know why Giannis is not wearing this new colorway of the Zoom Freak 3, but who's ever wearing them? These are dope. Using a pretty standard green, cream, and gum bottom color scheme, this colorway doesn't do anything too crazy, but that's exactly why I love them. The classic green and cream color scheme is definitely a fan favorite around the league, and I think it works flawlessly on the silhouette, with my only criticism being the black outline swoosh towards the collar. I just feel like this should have just been green or cream. The black is just slightly throwing me off. But look, either way, this is just an extremely clean colorway, and I think Nike should go back to launching their new signature sneakers in team-exclusive color schemes just like this, but maybe I'm just showing my age there. Next up at number six, we have LaMelo Ball with the MB01. LaMelo and Puma are back at it again with a new colorway of his first signature sneaker, but this time I actually asked you guys on Instagram to help give these a nickname. One of you guys suggested pumpkin pie, while another one of you said orange camo flag. But I think I'm gonna crown Desert Forest by Harley Cottom as the winner, because I feel that that nickname catches the feel of this colorway perfectly. 
The Desert Camo Upper alongside the Orange Midsole slash Outsole just makes for a really unique combination that I'm a huge fan of. And hopefully Puma decides to drop these at retail because I think a lot of people would like to pick these up as they stand out on the court and really don't look like anything else out there. Also, one of you guys suggested peanut butter and jelly as a nickname for these, but why? I don't see any peanut butter or jelly. Coming in at number five, we have PJ Tucker with the Air Jordan 2. Well, apparently PJ was feeling himself last week because he decides to rock the extremely rare and expensive Eminem Air Jordan 2s. Originally released back in 2008 with a limited run that only contained 313 pairs, the Air Jordan 2 Retro Eminem uses a gray, black, and red color scheme alongside some unique graphics on the collar, which of course are inspired by the movie 8 Mile. Now I'll be the first one to admit that I was never a huge fan of this colorway on its own. It always reminded me of the Stealth Air Jordan 3s, but the fact that it was extremely limited and it was inspired by Eminem, that's what makes this colorway so cool. And on top of that, these are valued at around $5,000. So the fact that PJ just decided to play in an NBA game with them makes it all the more crazy. Next up at number four, we have Montrez Harrell with the Air Flight Posit 2. Montrez checks in with his second entry of the week, this time sporting a 2000s classic. The Air Flight Posit 2 originally released in the year 2000 and was actually a Kevin Garnett signature sneaker that sported a very futuristic look that of course featured the posit material on the upper. Now obviously these are extremely nostalgic for me, but I just really love Montrez's game plan here. Not only did he rock a super unique silhouette, but he did so in a colorway that just looks absolutely beautiful on that Hornets retro court. And that's exactly why I got these so high on the list. Retro court, retro shoe, more guys should be doing this. Look how awesome the results are. Next up at number three, we have LeBron James with the 25 and fives. See, like I said earlier, LeBron is super erratic as to what shoes he's going to wear on a night-to-night -night basis. But during his homecoming game in Cleveland, he decides to rock the 25 and fives in the Four Horsemen colorway. Using a white perforated leather upper alongside metallic gold straps on the collar, as well as some navy hits on the branding, this is one of the most visually unique LeBrons of all time. But what makes this sneaker so incredible is that LeBron is actually wearing an OG pair of them, as you can see with the yellowing on the toe box and heel instead of a retro. Who knows, maybe Nike is sending signals to Nike like, yo, I want you guys to retro these, but whatever the reason, I'm glad he brought these out because these have always been one of my favorite LeBrons of all time. Coming in as our runner up, we have Paul George with the PG6. Paul George finally made his return on the court last week and since he did debut his brand new signature silhouette, you guys already know it's going to be at the top of the list. The PG6 does use a similar shape as its predecessor, but this time around sports a very playful aesthetic, which includes that Nike React branding on the midsole, as well as the ever so popular reverse swoosh on the heel. Now PG actually debuted the sixes in a lot of different colorways, but for me, I think my favorite of the bunch is going to have to be that mint black and white colorway. I mean, honestly, who doesn't like themselves a good mint upper? But overall, I think fans of the PG line are gonna be very happy with how the sixes came out. Well, actually, I don't wanna make that assumption, so let me know down below. If you're a fan of the PG line, will you be picking up a pair of sixes? If you've never had a PG sneaker, will these be your first pair, or is it just a hard pass? Let me know in the comment section below. Finally, at number one, we have Zion Williamson with the debut of the Jordan Zion 2. Wow. I was not expecting to see anything about the Zion 2 anytime soon because honestly, I just wasn't expecting to see Zion anytime soon. But here we are with our first look at his second signature silhouette. Now, right off the bat, I do want to say that I do think this is a visual upgrade over the original Zions, but I'm really only saying that because the original Zions didn't have a visual identity whatsoever. 
whereas these definitely look unique and unlike any signature line on the market today. Now, whether you like that design or not is entirely up to you, but I do appreciate the effort here with a mid-cut design that features a four-foot strap, as well as what looks like synthetic leather materials, which is definitely unique amongst other signature sneakers. If you caught my performance review of the Zion Ones, you already know that I thought Jordan Brand had a lot of ground to make up performance-wise, so hopefully the Zion 2s improve in their encore performance, but as of right now, we can only judge what they look like. So let me know down below if you are digging what you see from the Zion 2s. For me, I'm just flabbergasted that we got our first look at the silhouette, and that is exactly why I got them at the number one spot, as the best sneaker worn in the NBA during week 14 of the 2021-22 season.